Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to ADNT Presents. Hello, Hyderabad. Uh, my name is Sumit Biswas, and uh, I lead uh, data and AI for the fraud team in Chief Data Office, ATNT India. My topic for today is statistics in the world of data and AI for ATNT. So let me start with a famous quote from a renowned American writer, Mark Twain, who once said, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yeah? But, but why do we think so, right? The question is, why do we say, uh, uh, you know, this, this quote is very famous. How, how come it, it came, came through all the way from the 19th century until here? So, it turns out that I have three pictures that I'll use as data points to illustrate this further. Can anybody say what is the first picture? Anyone from the crowd? Want to take a guess? Yeah, street vendors selling peanuts, right? But if you ask a statistician, he might as well say that no, it's a pie chart. It's a pie chart of happiness. Right? The second one is not a ghost from a cartoon series. It's a paranormal and a normal distribution. So distributions can be a little scary. I remember that uh, in, in, in college, one full course was in the theory of distributions. And I, by the time we, we finished that course, I forgot the first one that we started with. So, and the third one, well, some of you might say that it's, it's a scene from a famous TV series. But if you ask a statistician, he might say that, no, that's some outliers in my data set that I need to impute. So that's why it's the power of statistics. It has a persuasive power, right? And that's why it becomes very imperative that how we use it in our day-to-day -day lives to interpret data. So that brings me to my second slide, which is the journey, my journey, into data science and AI from a statistician and uh, how uh, I'm using it at at and right now. So, if you talk about data science and AI as a family, what we often tend to do in our busy lives today, that we tend directly jump into solving the problem and directly coding the problem. So we tend to miss out on a lot of foundational aspects in terms of domain understanding and trying to understand that what even, what is the problem that I'm trying to solve. So coding, maths, stats, visualizations, individually, right? Each one of them is extremely important. But together, they form as one team. And together, they try to solve the problem that we have and make meaningful insights and decisions, right? So, the journey starts here, which is understanding the business problem, right? Understanding what do we have? What am I trying to solve here? And then, it, the next step is data collection. So what problem am I trying to solve? And what would be the relevant features? What can I use as my feature set? And then the next step, which is around data pre-processing. And a lot of us obviously use a lot of missing value treatments, outliers, right, in our day-to-day -day lives, and where we say that whatever data we collected, we need to do, treat it to, in order to make model predictions better. We, we tend to make a lot of features, we tend to make uh, uh, feature engineering, right, all sorts of that uh, family. And then the, sec then the next one is here, which is the exploratory data analysis. Now, this is a very important step because here is where we try to validate 
our hypothesis that we initially started with, that whether or not the data points that I collected, the features which I made, they really make sense or not, right? Whether they're really trying to give me, add value to what am I trying to build. And the next step is the most interesting step, where we jump right from, before even understanding the business problem, is the modeling step. But if you see, we have a good three, four steps before that, which, is, which needs to be complete before we dive into this one, right? So the modeling is the most interesting step in, in, in the uh, life of a data scientist where they are wanting to predict and fit some nice, good machine learning models. But it is very important that we take care of all of these steps right before we go into this one. And then, of course, the model evaluation, the model validation, trying to see that whether or not the model that we built that really uh, can predict out of the training data set in the real life, right? So we use training data set to train our models and then we validate it in an out of time sample to see that whether or not it is performing good enough, it holds good for a data set outside the training set. And finally, the most important step without which all of these previous steps becomes null and void, which is the model deployment state, right? So if you don't deploy your models, they don't end up in production, and you don't get to see what value you are driving by doing all of these steps. So if you see the full life cycle of the data science practice, it is not just the modeling part that we tend to focus on. And because, you know, this is the part where, which, is, which is the most glamorous part, but we should understand that each of these components fits the overall puzzle, right? And we should not directly focus on one of these steps, right? So this is all one team. And without any of the components which I just said, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it's not the secret to, I mean, it's not the secret sauce, right? So all of this happen, has to happen in tandem, has to happen collaboratively. Which takes me to the next slide, which is uh, the role of uh, statistics in the telecom industry and how I am using it at at and So I'll talk about four different business functions where uh, the applications of statistics are very relevant. So I've, I've just taken a few examples here, but obviously there are more to this. So first one is the credit and finance, uh, which I was part of at at and And here we do scorecard development, customer churn, survival, behavioral and distribution analysis. So what is scorecard development? So scorecards is basically all my customers, right? So, it's, so all of you college students out here, you have a scorecard. Hope you have a good one in the last semester. But the scorecard in finance is basically where you try to evaluate the credit worthiness of a customer whether or not that customer will be able to repay the loans which I'm offering them. That's scorecard development, right? So it's a little different from the mark sheets that we tend to have in college. And once I've decided that, yes, these are the set of customers which can repay my loan, the next problem which comes to the hand is, of course, losing them. So which, which is where we come to the customer churning part. So we obviously want to retain back customers, good customers that we want. And that's where the customer churn becomes extremely important. Because if we lose out good customers, we are basically losing out money, right? Nobody wants to lose money. Anyone? No? <laughs> okay. So customer churn, right? So we do a lot of predictive modeling for trying to understand who are the potential customers who can leave 
and thereby having good retention strategies to make sure that we can help them retain back. The third one is uh, survival analysis. So customer churn and survival, they go hand in hand. And we use a lot of survival analysis techniques uh, to solve customer churning problems. And next step is to understand that whether or not the customers which have acquired over a period of time, are they showing trends or signs of drifting? Right? So what, what do I mean by that? So a cricketer at the peak of his career might be having an average of 60, right? And by the time he reaches the peak uh, and, and try, you know, wins a couple of World Cups, then we think that, okay, it's probably time for him to retire. So that's why distribution drift is very important, right? Because you tend to get a sense of where a person is going. Right? Where am I going in my career path? Where that cricketer is going in his career path? And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's why studying behavioral analysis and distribution analysis is very important. The next business uh, that I'll talk about is uh, fraud detection, which is very close to me because I'm currently part of it. And here we are using a lot of supervised. Uh, techniques, unsupervised techniques, right, to understand, to predict good customers, to differentiate good customers from the bad customers, trying to adopt a lot of segmentation-based approaches using clustering techniques, right, testing of hypothesis to understand whether or not my distributions are looking similar, whether the test of significance, I have a good p-value, whether or not I can reject my null hypothesis, and all of that. Design of experiments, where I try to understand that, hey, how are the customers reacting and responding to different types of factors and underlying different types of levels inside those factors. So each of these are very interesting topics in statistics and, and you know, if, if any of you have a major or a minor, you would have gone through many of them. But, but this is where uh, things get really interesting because this is a foundation that you would probably be using a lot in your day-to-day -day lives if you end up in a data science industry, right? Uh, the third is sales and marketing. Sales and marketing, of course, uses a lot of propensity modeling again, segmentation, recommendation engines. We are all part of recommendation engines in our day-to-day -day lives when we are doing online shopping, right? We get, hey, you got this item, why don't you buy this one as well? So, recommendation engines, of course, uses uh, primarily at its heart collaborative and content-based filtering. It uses user to user, item to item, and you know, product and item factors, all of those different combinations and permutations here. And then finally, uh, a lot of A-B testing, is also done to understand how different groups of customers are reacting to different types of treatments, right? And how can I calculate my true incrementality, my true benefit when I'm launching an offer, when I'm giving a deal, right? So it's, so it's very important that we understand that we are giving the right set of deals to the right set of customers. Somebody who's already buying, why should I have been giving a deals to them? So I should only give deals to people who are probably, who can, who, can, who can attract using those deals, right? And lastly, uh, network optimization, which is again a vast field. And in network optimization, we have a lot of applications in demand, forecasting, planning, inventory management, making sure that our distribution centers, uh, they have, uh, they understand and predict supplier lead times better. Uh, right and and risk management, uh, process optimization. Of course, in risk management, AT&T has a very strict uh, and a very robust uh, data security policy. Right, uh, so it's imperative that in today's world, with changing, uh, with evolving, uh, you know, changing uh, uh, data governance laws, 
uh, we stick to those, we adhere to those data privacy laws and make sure that we have a safe and secure network. So with that, I conclude my talk, and I hope I've given some food for thought to all the bright minds present in this room today. Uh, hope you have a good one. Thank you.